Hi, my name's Simon Howard. I'm the marketing director here at Bailey, and welcome to the first of our behind-the-scenes visits to key Bailey suppliers. Uh, a modern caravan and motorhomes, they're very, very complex vehicles, and I don't know if you're aware, but each one consists of about 12,000 individual components, which we purchase from over 100 different companies. And what we thought might be interesting is to visit some of these key suppliers to find out a little bit more about what goes in to a modern touring caravan or motorhome. There are many, many things that you wouldn't necessarily see when you're on a caravanning holiday. Now we're at BCA today, who do the wiring harnesses, and, and we're joined by Wayne Boyd, who is the sales and marketing director. Now Wayne. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do for Bailey Caravans? Okay, well, uh, we're fortunate enough to work in partnership uh, with Bailey, uh, and we produce uh, all of the wiring harnesses, control systems, and some of the plastic products uh, that are fitted within the vehicles. So plastic products like sockets? Um, some sockets, uh, your underfloor battery box, um, your awning light. Um, okay, so pretty, you're, you're pretty much the sort of one-stop shop yes. for all things electrical, yep. for Bailey caravans and motorhomes. Accessories, yes. Off the top of the head, um, Average length of a wiring loom in, in, in a standard baby ca maybe this caravan, how, how long would it be? Um, you would be looking at 160 metres uh, for a 7 metre caravan. That's a lot of wire. Is okay, it? Yeah. and then likewise, if you were to then put all those individual cables end to end, um, you're looking at probably closer to 700 metres uh, of cable uh, for the one caravan. For one caravan. For one caravan. Yeah. With that in mind, with all the different layouts and components that might go into a uh, Phoenix, Pegasus, Unicorn. How many looms do you actually um, have to manufacture for Bailey? Looking at your range of both caravans and motorhomes, um, we would produce 1,100 bespoke harnesses uh, to complete okay. to complete that range. Now, if you're on about kilometre drums, I suppose the big question. This is going to be the hot topic now. In, in length of looms, yes. using the standardised measurement of, 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 the, of the of the earth, um, would the amount of Bailey looms that you've manufactured over the last 30 years, how far would it go? Would it, would it go from we're in Yorkshire at the moment, would it stretch from here to the Isle of Wight? Would it go halfway around the globe? Or I, I mean, I've no idea. Well, obviously I've done the quick calculation, okay? And yes, I can confirm that the Bailey harnesses over the last 30 years would stretch three times around the globe. Really? Wow. <laughs> Wayne's kindly laid out a wiring loom outside, which is for a Pegasus Ancona, so let's go and take a look. Yeah, so thanks for um, setting this wiring loom out. For okay, us. yeah. Because um, without that, it's difficult to tell exactly what we've got. We've got a maze of wires on the floor. What you see here is, is basically what's installed inside the uh, the Pegasus. Okay, and how many individual looms are there in this particular harness? To make up that particular caravan, there are 28 individual harnesses for that vehicle. It's absolutely fascinating to, mm. to, to, to see it like this. Um, just to give people a sort of reference point, this is sort of the back end of the caravan, so where we were sitting talking. Uh, where we were sitting earlier, yes. So maybe you can just talk us through some of the individual elements of this particular harness. Oh right, okay. Uh, well when we're constructing a harness, uh, we'll always start at the high level brake light, it's at the furthest point away. Um, mm. Ultimately there you see we have a, a rear harness, um, mm -hmm. you have so waterproof connectors on. The road lights there. Yeah, you've got waterproof connectors on there um, because obviously there's a, a requirement uh, mm. whilst it's on the road that those uh, remain dry. Okay, mm. and working our, our way around the vehicle, mm -hmm. um, you have your entrance door over here. With the, um, where the awning light You've got the there. awning light. Yeah. Uh, there's some elements of this uh, harness is obviously sat on the floor. Okay. okay. And it would normally be um, up the walls heading towards the, the ceiling of the vehicle. Absolutely fascinating, Wayne, and again, it's a really great way to demonstrate how complex these harnesses are. It's all hidden within the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, likelihood is that uh, an end user will see maybe the PDU, they'll see the awning light and the control panel and some sockets within, but everything else you guys have cleverly hidden away whilst you construct the vehicle. Fantastic. Thanks very much for showing us around. Thank you. <laughs> So Lee, here we are, um, sunny South Yorkshire, and um, day one of the behind the scenes tour is, is completed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, how do you feel it's gone? 
Yeah, I mean, it is, it's a fairly hard, high bar to follow from, with BCA. Um, the fact they've gone all the trouble and, and laid out that wiring loom in front, not just a wiring loom, but one for an Ancona, mm -hmm. so we could park alongside it, um, uh, has been epic, because when it's buried in a caravan, you've got no idea how much work, effort and design goes into that wiring loom. You know, you come in, you turn on the light, you might, you might I don't know, boil the kettle or something. You don't really think about it, but to actually see it led there and the process involved in the factory to get there, I, uh, yeah, outstanding. As first days go, very good indeed. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, the viewers will find it really informative. Yeah, I, I, I was really pleased how today's gone. Yeah, so thanks very much to them for looking after us and uh, uh, onwards um, to another UK supplier tomorrow. Mm. Morning everybody and welcome to day two of the behind the scenes tour. Today we're here in Brig in North Lincolnshire on an industrial estate and as you may be able to hear in the background there's a bit of an industry going on so please forgive us if there's a bit of background noise. We're at QK uh, and we're joined with Greg. Now even I had to go onto Google and have a look to see what QK made because there's a lot of things in here that they make that you might not be aware of. You know, there's such a locker doors, the worktops and everything like that that you use on a daily basis. You might not know A, where it comes from and B, how it's evolved into that process. So, uh, Greg, welcome. Welcome, Greg. But before we start, I mean, there is there is a, an elephant in the caravan, <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. Yep. The good news, everybody, is Greg is a very keen caravan, is proud over a new caravan, but, but sadly, it's not a Bailey. So, Greg, it's unforgivable. Yeah, <laughs> my apologies. Sorry, but, uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, this is really good news that our suppliers, like, like Wayne Boyd yesterday from BCA, mm. he owns a motorhome, Greg owns a caravan. So it gives you guys, first of all, the chance to see your products in situ in the, uh, the final vehicle, but also sort of gives you a real head start in terms of design because you're looking at it from, a, mm. from an owner's perspective. So that really is a good thing. Would you like to explain what these are? I didn't realise how complex these panels are. So um, would you like me to hand you a sample and you can just give us a quick run through as to how these are made? Yes, sure. So here you've got a cross section of one of the, the curved doors. You can see through the centre there, here you've got wood, wood frame on the outside. And in the centre you have uh, a lightweight honeycomb product. This is made from reconstituted recycled cardboard and this enables us to deliver a lightweight product which is approximately 50% lighter than any solid panel product that you'd be able to put into a caravan and that's obviously a key factor as all caravanners will know that you know your towing weight is an essential important factor that you have to consider and then the veneer and the finish that's put over the top depends on the particular model and the customer's preference, but we have a multitude of different finishes that we can apply. And these are pressed and glued onto the frame and the honeycomb, and then they're cut and edged and finished. How long approximately to make one panel? To make a single panel from process to process itself would be a couple of hours, yeah. um, but you're, you're adding on a lot of 12 hours plus for the, for the cure time for the glue. Now with lightness in mind, um, I know it's difficult to tell on camera, but I mean, these panels are, are incredibly light, but what tests do you do to make sure, you know, that, uh, that they're rigid enough for, for everyday caravan use? Yeah, so we use external bodies to help us test the integrity of the structure. So we've done tests of the gluing, we've done tests, um, heat tests, we've done weight tests, and we ensure that there's a structural insert wherever the caravan, wherever the panel or the door is going to be fixed in the caravan. So essentially it's solid to solid. So the actual attachment point is still at a solid point. So there's nothing, there's no compromise by you ever using the, the center of a piece where you've got the honeycomb as part of your structural mechanism. That's, that's just holding the form and the, and the shape of the door or the panel. So, so that's locker doors, but it's not just locker doors you make. No, as it's well. not just locker doors. Tabletops, made exactly the same way. Indeed, and, and we've made this tabletop. So yeah. the principle is essentially the same using different materials, but if you took this apart, you would see the same sort of internals as, as you see here. So, if you're talking maybe a bit about variation, mm -hmm. um, until recently you've just been making flat panels and, and flat worktops and works, but recently you've invested a lot in some 
you very swizzy equipment which will allow you to make shaped panels as the sample you've got there. Absolutely, yeah. So we've we've invested as, as part of investing generally in the facility, we've also invested in the capability to make curved panels. Mm -hmm. But that's meant that we've had to invest in new new presses, uh, new post forming machines, uh, new, new new gluing te technology. Um, and that enables us to move on from just supplying the flat content within a caravan to the curved panels as well and bringing forward the, the same honeycomb lightweight properties into those curved products. So in addition to caravans and motorhomes, where else do you sell your lightweight panels? Um, so the other sectors that we supply the lightweight panels into is, is furniture. So off, office furniture, office it's, it's yep. the point of sale. Mm -hmm. So we supply it into point of sale sector and exhibitions and displays. Now we've covered an awful lot of questions here um, and to be fair I didn't realise it was so involved with, with lightweight furniture panels if I'm honest. Thank you very much for that. Um, it has been incredibly insightful. Yeah, no Greg, great, thanks for hosting us. Uh, we just need to sort you out with a new caravan and we'll be happy. <laughs> My pleasure and I look forward to getting a new caravan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to the caravan and Lee and I have just enjoyed another fascinating day visiting another one of our key suppliers. Today we were at QK and QK make our furniture panels, they make our uh, locker doors, they our worktops and tabletops. Really fascinating insight to see how they uh, produce these items and how, how light they are. Yeah, I mean, the chap there said that some of the panels they make are 70% lighter than traditional wood. The average is 50%. Now, if you're having half a weight saving there, you know, with one eye on the future with uh, electric vehicles and lighter caravans in general, it's good to see that, that not only is a company looking at that, but it's a UK company that's doing so. It's fantastic, and they make them lighter by this fabulous honeycomb filling that they yeah. put inside the panels, which give it its strength and rigidity but take out a lot of weight. Yeah, I mean, the machinery they had in there, a significant investment to get those curved doors with the nice edges. And uh, also, similar to when I was visiting the Bailey production line, that speak to the chap on this massive new machine, and, and the sort of the pride that he was taking in his work was, well, it's great to see, he was loving it. So yeah, all in all, a fascinating day, but the undoubted highlight was the, the my piece of reversing the gun with the pictures you can see here. <laughs> and look where I am in terms of the line of the pegs that only took about half an hour to get it in the right place. But yeah. uh, um, I'm very surprised we didn't get a round of applause from everyone on the site for it, but I'm very, very, very pleased myself. Yeah, I mean, Paul Rob, who's behind mm. the camera now, he, he was a bit fearful that he was mm. trying to be filmed at night <laughs> by the time we'd pitched up, but now all, all went well. Morning everyone and welcome to day three of our behind the scenes tour. Today we're in some not so sunny uh, Rotherham in South Yorkshire um, and this is the home of Thetford UK and this is where all the ovens that go into Bailey Caravans and Motorhomes are produced. Very pleased to be here, very pleased to welcome Paul Martin who's the account manager for Thetford UK so fundamentally he looks after us at Bailey here. Welcome Paul. Morning, thank Morning, you. Morning Paul. Thank you. Um, and we did our homework last night. We uh, In the caravan we had a lovely um, courtesy of your oven, mm. we had a lovely salmon and asparagus tray bake. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we got to know your product pretty well. So with that in mind, can I ask you a few questions about Thetford UK? Fire away. Okay. Now, what with Thetford ovens I've used on a variety of different uh, fuels and, and power sources, such as 240 volts, 12 volt supply, which ignites the gas and obviously gas itself. Now, what are the challenges that you as a company may face? We're trying to sort of combine all three aspects to power a cooker into a leisure vehicle unit. Different environments, temperatures, different um, amounts of vibration when it's traveling in between locations. So it, it adds quite a lot of complexity. You have to use lightweight but strong materials. Yeah in a slightly smaller space, but still give our customer the performance of a home from home oven yeah. um, with three different power sources there. Two of which is really what you use for cooking. The 12 volt is really there for ignition purposes. Yeah. So it's really quite a sophisticated bit of kit. Yeah. And it's certainly not something you could just nip down and buy on the high street. No, <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're much lighter, which supports the, the, the weight being kept low on a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, 
they, like I said, are designed to be able to handle vibrations traveling along the road. Um, the extreme temperatures, our products go into Sweden, Australia and the UK and the temperature variances externally mm. of those regions is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So they have to be able to perform well even from the second you pull up at a site. So not when the, the caravan is warmed, yeah. it's straight off the block. So that presents a lot of challenges. Uh, we, we're also working with LPG, not mains gas, which is what you traditionally find in mm -hmm. curries of the world, where you'd yeah. find domestic appliances. So there are quite a, a lot of differences, and that presents lots of challenges when you're designing new products. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, yeah. Weight must be a key consideration. <laughs> Again, it's, it's one of the, the biggest, it's also probably one of the, the heaviest appliances that we fit, which is why typically with virtually every caravan, the kitchen's always over the axle because obviously yes. that makes the stable. I mean, weight must be a key consideration for you. Absolutely, it's, it's one of the challenges that we always face is, is weight reduction, mm. um, performance up. <laughs> so trying to find the balance between those two is, is always a challenge and that comes back to material selection, um, how you design components that go in there as well. And, you know, we, we always try and save a few kilos, which doesn't sound a lot to you and I, in the whole build of a caravan that can actually be quite a, a big difference yeah, when yeah i understand you not only manufacture ovens for caravans and motems you have other markets as well yeah that's right we our appliances are sold into the marine market both um course, coast yeah, mm. yeah, similar yeah. challenges i guess both coastal coastal not as much but certainly inland marine um narrow boats touch barges mm. um like you say very similar requirements. So I spent a day on the production line at Bailey. Uh, I was manning 12 stations out of 25 and it was good to see an insight as to how these components come together. Now one of the stations that I wasn't allowed on for, for good reason, as far as I was allowed on the other 12 to be fair, um, was obviously the installation of your oven and all the, the, the gas stuff that surrounds this. Now um, what processes have you got between Thetford and Bailey for you know installing gas appliances? Yeah, it's, we have a, a, a process which we call vendor vetting. Um, we, and it comes in multiple stages, so we have an initial one which would be either ourselves or Bailey have a new product. We would deliver a sample, we would do an installation, uh, make sure that both parties understand the requirements to make sure it's safely installed, um, and then we would approve that, that installation. Following on from that, we have regular installation audits, and that is periodically, probably every six months, not a lot would change in six months, so we would we would carry that out. Um, and we also support Bailey with, on their own line, where we would offer continuous support, so we'd be in, on site with one of our engineers at least once a week, sometimes twice, um, making sure that everything is as it should be, ask, answer any questions, and that supports both of us. You know, we like to understand changes that you're considering, and and also what we're looking at doing to, to improve things as well. Paul, that's absolutely fantastic. Really interesting insight to what goes on here at Thetford. And I'm just particularly pleased that we're in, a, in the UK, uh, the UK manufacturer who, who builds their components using UK raw materials. I think that's a fantastic message. So, um, uh, another day, another supplier. Um, today we visited Thetford UK and that really was really a, a step up in scale. Oh, completely. I mean, it, um, if you picture a factory, sort of, um, you know, where, where it's sheets of uh, raw materials in, steel, glass and everything else, they make the products from scratch. It's yep. not shipped in and assembled. Um, and especially when we went into the far reaches of the factory, there's big, I mean, if you remember Spinflow, these machines date back to Spinflow fast machines, 40 years old, and they're still stamping out sinks now. So for me, it was just the scale of it, the amount that they process, and the fact that it's from scratch. Yes, I mean, that obviously makes them far more resilient against supply chain issues, because they pretty much manufacture all the components themselves. But in terms of scale, you're looking at 2,000 ovens a week, yeah. which is uh, huge, and they supply UK, Europe, and Australasia is, is a big market for them as well. So that was really interesting uh, today. Yeah, and, and also we'll just say thanks to Thetford because they'll be uh, finishing off our day, even though they're not here with us, 
because we're going to be using their oven yet again to cook our tea. Well, you did such a fantastic job again, Lee. I think uh, you're going to have the oven mitts on once more. Morning everyone and welcome to day four of the Bailey of Bristol behind the scenes tour. Uh, this is the final day we're visiting UK manufacturers. Today we're at Belfield Leisure which is located in Ilkeston in deepest darkest Derbyshire. The guys and girls from Belfield are busy uh, making uh, soft furnishings um, for us at the moment and you may better hear that noise in the background while we're talking so, so please bear with us. Um, but I, I'm very pleased to introduce John Welcome, um, guys, to welcome. our site. Morning, Please, John. John is commercial director for the Leisure Division at this site here. So fundamentally, at this site, they make purely soft furnishings for leisure vehicles, like caravans and motorhomes, but also what other parts of the business are there, John? So, so as a group, we, uh, we do soft furnishings for the, the high street, so the likes of M&S, Next, etc. Uh, we do in the region of about 11,000 seats. So if you class a two-seater as a two-seat, so 11,000 seats go through the factory. Uh, we produce around about 500 pairs of curtains, ready-made curtains a week, um, as well as we've also got our own foam conversion company. So the foam that you, you see within your sofas, your mattresses, etc., we can produce that ourselves as well. So you've got quite a lot going on, and it's probably just worth clarifying, although we say soft furnishings, effectively you make, make the cushions that we're sitting on, exactly. you make the bed mattresses, yep. you make the curtains, you make tack panels which is like headboards for sort of fixed beds and you also do things like our optional bedding sets that we sell through Prima Leisure. We do yeah Any, anything that's got fabric within it whether it's tacked on or whether it's wrapped around the, the, the foam as you say is all produced uh, by Belfield Leisure and it's all made here in Ilkeston in the UK so everything is UK produced. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, I didn't even realise that you produce stuff for, for big high street giants, which must lead on nicely to uh, producing quality sets for caravans and motorhomes. It does, yeah. I mean, they're very similar in, in you know, your you sofas that you sit on. It's very similar construction, very similar fabrics. The fabrics are exactly the same grade as what you see in your in your home. Um, the same with the curtains. So, that, you know, there's nothing that changes. Um, the big consideration within the touring caravan is obviously the, the space as well as the, the, you know, the, the likeness of it. So. Sure, yeah, I mean, weight, again, must be a, a key factor. I mean, uh, mm. you don't need to worry particularly about the weight of the sofa at home, uh, unless you've got a dodgy floor. Um, but fundamentally, um, I, I guess weight must really affect um, the type of design that you choose for these uh, particular sets of furnishings. It is, it's a, I mean, it's a very important consideration. You know, part of the weight, not only is it to make sure you're within your chassis limits, but also, you know, every single kilo that we can save does save you on the fuel of your, you know, you're towing the, the caravan itself. So all this forms part of, you know, the, the design consideration. You referenced fabrics earlier on a fabric choice. Now these change throughout fashion decades or, or, or you know, just with people's tastes. Now, now I'm an owner of a 70s caravan and if I walk in there, I almost need my, my sunglasses on because it's, it's <laughs> eye burning. Now, how do your team Pick the fabrics that, that you know span from you know obviously you've been producing stuff for Bailey for a very long time. Yeah. How do you sort of follow fashion tastes and where we are now in general trends? I mean both both companies both have the design teams. We're both looking at the trends of what's going on in the high street. We're quite fortunate we do supply a lot of the high street, so we know what the trends are at any given point. Um, and like I say, working both you know with Bailey and ourselves, you know we, we build these schemes together. Uh, now we've talked about what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. Now, um, very kindly, in true Blue Peter style, John has brought along some that you've prepared earlier yep. for us to have a look at. So, can you explain the, the different types and, and you know anything else to do with what's in the caravan seat? Yep, so in, in the seating, in the, in, the, in the first instance, the, the Bailey seating is a, is a sprung construction. Um, so, we're on the sleeping area of the, of the seating, we, we try and ensure that the spring's within there. Um, so they're in behind that so bit of foam if, if I just just take away this this piece of foam so you can see it's encapsulated within the, the foam around it um, we, we ensure that the foam around the spring is is a very similar grade and density so you you, you, you do not feel the difference You're not getting lumps um, yeah. exactly that yeah, yeah. but you know the, the, the Bailey construction is is primarily sprung on things like backrests and backrests that aren't used within the, the seating makeup these generally are more would solid you like foam. This one? I would love that one. There we go. <laughs> so this is, is more of a solid con uh, foam construction. So um, it enables us just to use slightly lighter weight foams that are exactly the same feel. But again, it gives you that benefit of, of saving weight. 
yeah. which you know does so, have environmental yeah. benefits as so well. So just typically that would be for cushions that are not normally used for bed makeup, whereas the base cushions would normally be sprung. Exactly that. Yeah, I mean this is one of the front corner ones that it, it, it's not laid on. Yeah. So. With kids and dogs, I mean ever popular in a caravan. Yeah. Can you talk us through AquaClean? Yeah, I mean AquaClean, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a fabric range that's used within, the again, the retail marketplace. Um, it does allow you to spill you know, your everyday sort of liquids on there, smearing smart ketchup, crayon, you know, if a kid decides to draw on the, on the cushions, it will come off. And, and the way AquaClean describe it is, it's a bit like um, each of the fibres is, is wrapped within a little bit of detergent. So when you just use your clean water, and it is clean water that you use to wipe these things, it activates the detergents that were within the fabric and it, it allows it to be cleaned. Fantastic, yeah. I think we could have done with that for this trip, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, fantastic. That was really enlightening. We got a really good insight into you and, and your business there, and uh, I think it's really good that um, you're doing so well in spite of challenging conditions. Again, another fascinating day, not looking at one, but five separate factories here. Yeah, I mean, it's... It, their products are probably one of the most familiar products uh, in a caravan because, you know, if you're not sitting on them, you're sleeping on them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this has been my bed for the week as well, so uh, before we got here... Sadly I'd... for me, this has been mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not quite far <laughs> enough away. Um, but, um, you know, so we, we sort of got to know Belfield, if you like, before mm -hmm. we've even arrived here. But it's good to see that, um, you know, there's a lot going on here. This site is purely just for leisure vehicles, mm -hmm. now, which I didn't realise. And it's also good to know that... Um, um, you know, they've got some of the big high street names that, that, that they supply products for. Yeah, so, so not only do they make for caravans and motorhomes, mm. but also they make for, for high street stores, and a lot of the standards transfer across both, certainly in terms of safety standards for, for fabrics, but also the construction techniques, etc. So there's a lot of commonality between the two. Yeah, and also um, the theme for the UK so far has always been that keeping an eye on the future you know, not just sort of standing still, what can we do in the future for, you know, environmental reasons and also, you know, to sort of what new technology brings. And, and Belfield has been exactly the same, the Aqua Clean that we know, because that's in the Alicanto range, um, but also some of the other things that they've discussed that we might not be able to talk about yet. It's good to see that, you know, they're certainly forging ahead, keeping an eye on the future and future markets. So yeah, that's the UK leg over, um, however, we're not finished yet. Um, while we do try to source as many of our components as we can, as, as close as possible uh, to home, um, we do um, actually source a number of parts from, from Europe and a lot of the big suppliers, the big component suppliers are based there. So we thought next week we, we'd um, toddle off in the caravan and uh, go visit some of them. Yes, so um, a big week next week. Yeah. Um, so it will be good to see how the European market compares with the UK market. Mm -hmm. um, to be fair, I haven't been abroad for a while, so it would be also nice to uh, explore some of the sites over there as well. Get used to driving on the wrong side of the road again. Absolutely, yeah.